Uh, good morning to everybody. Um, welcome to all to a special event, Japan-Latin America relations then and now. I want to thank all of you for coming. Many of the speakers and participants came from great distance, uh, from Tokyo and throughout Latin America, and took time out from the busy schedules to be with us uh, for this special event. The relationship between La Japan and Latin America is longstanding, deep, robust, and pragmatic. I won't give you all the statistics and history since you will hear that from our speakers this morning. But clearly the topic has not gotten the attention that it merits. That struck us especially in light of Prime Minister Abe's visit to the region last year. With this event, which began yesterday afternoon with a highly productive and frank roundtable discussion and continues this morning in public session, the Inter-American Dialogue hopes to begin to address and correct this omission. We are very excited to be exploring the various dimensions of Japan-Latin American relations in greater depth and hope this will be the start of a longer-term sustained effort. We are delighted and honored to be co-hosting this meeting with the Japan Association of Latin America and the Caribbean, JLAC, and to work with Mr. Kudo on this very important initiative. Thank you, Mr. Kudo. We are very grateful as well to the Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the very extensive assistance planning with this meeting. And we want to welcome the Director General Takezo, who is with us today as well. Thank you very much for joining us. This meeting would not have been possible without the sponsorship provided by Mitsubishi, NEC, Mayakawa, the Bank of Tokyo, Mitsubishi, and Prudential. We thank all of them for their support and collaboration. From the Inter-American Dialogue, the driving force behind this initiative has been Margaret Myers, who was chiefly responsible for conceiving and organizing this event. Margaret, as you know, is well-known specialist on China and China-Latin American relations. She directs the Dialogue's very active program in this area. She has embraced the topic of Japan and Latin America with characteristic energy and enthusiasm. We want to thank Margaret for all she's done for making this possible. Before I introduce our distinguished speaker this morning, please allow me to recognize Ambassador Sase from Japan, who joins us. Thank you very much for being with us this morning, Mr. Ambassador. We are so honored and pleased that Joaquin Castro is with us this morning to share some opening remarks. Congressman Castro is uniquely suited to this role. There is no one better. Even if Pope Francis offered to speak at this conference, he would have been our second choice. I like your hyperbole. Uh, <laughs> Congressman Castro, now in his second term in the House of Representatives, is the founding co-chair of the U.S.-Japan Caucus, whose purpose is to educate the Congress on current events and strengthen ties between the U.S. and Japan. The Congressman visited Japan just last month. I'm sure he'll tell us about it in his remarks. In addition to that, Congressman Castro, who serves on the House Armed Services Committee, as well as the House Foreign Affairs Committee, has shown great commitment and leadership on U.S. relations with Latin America. He recently chaired a special dinner organized by the Dialogue on the challenges confronting Central America, and he also attended the Summit of the Americas that featured all of the heads of state in this hemisphere in Panama in April. Congressman Castro's uh, identical twin brother, Julian, is currently the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, formerly served as Mayor of San Antonio, where both brothers were born, raised, and raised before going on to Stanford and Harvard Law School and now winding up in Washington, D.C. We are very proud that Secretary Castro is a member of the Inter-American Dialogue. He's now on leave before, because of his current position with the administration. I should also mention that yesterday was Congressman Castro's 
birthday. So with that, please join me in welcoming him. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Well, first of all, Michael, I want to say thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for the introduction. And thank you to the Inter-American Dialogue and, and you and all of your work that you're doing to spotlight Latin America and the relationship with the United States. Thank you for everything. And to JLAC for being a partner in convening all of us today uh, to talk about the relationship between Japan and Latin America. Uh, we have, of course, in Japan, our most trusted ally in the Asia Pacific region, and of course, have many great friends in Latin America. And uh, it makes me uh, very proud today to be able to play a small part in bringing many of our friends together to strengthen their own relationships. Uh, I represent part of San Antonio, Texas, the 20th district. I sit on the Armed Services and Foreign Affairs Committee. And so for you can imagine that since I've arrived in the Congress, I've been knee deep in many of these issues. Uh, within the Foreign Affairs Committee, I sit on the Western Hemisphere Subcommittee and I moved onto that subcommittee this term specifically to be able to deal with issues in Latin America uh, because I have felt for quite a while that the Congress does not attend to Latin America in the way that it should. Uh, and so I hope, it's not only my hope, but the hope of many others on that committee to start to try to change that. Um, in my work, I also am co-chair of the U.S.-Japan Caucus. Uh, the caucus was founded two years ago around two years ago by myself and Congressman Devin Nunez, a Republican from California. Uh, I now have another co-chair, uh, Congressman Bustani from Louisiana. Uh, Devin Nunez became chairman of the Intelligence Committee in the House of Representatives, and because of that, he had to give up his chairmanship or his involvement, I think, of any, in any of the other foreign caucuses. Uh, but he's still a great friend of the caucus. Uh, and Congressman Bustani, I hope, will be around a while longer. I think he may be running for the United States Senate in Louisiana. Uh, so we may have a, another Republican co-chair. But Congressman Bustani has also been an incredible advocate of the U.S.-Japan relationship. Um, you know, I had a chance to visit uh, Japan last month. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about today and the issues that we're confronting together, both in Japan and the United States, and also issues that we confront in Latin America. I had a chance to meet with Prime Minister Abe, with Carolyn Kennedy, of course, our ambassador, who's wonderfully representing the United States and Japan, uh, with business leaders uh, from many companies there, and also with our counterpart, uh, in our counterpart to the caucus in Japan. Uh, and we had incredible conversations and wonderful dialogues, and they centered mostly around three things. Uh, the first one is uh, energy. Uh, I was one of the co-sponsors of legislation for example, to expedite LNG, liquefied natural gas exports, to our allies around the world. So uh, Japan, especially since uh, nuclear energy went offline, of course, has been pay paying quite a high price for its energy. And so you can imagine there is an eagerness to receive from the United States LNG exports. Uh, we also had conversations, including with the prime minister, uh, about the possibility of lifting the crude oil export ban uh, in the United States. That's a 1975 law uh, that, of course, has been longstanding now. Uh, there are exemptions that were made for contiguous nations like Canada and Mexico. Uh, in 1984, President Reagan uh, put it, or, or took advantage of that exemption for Canada, uh, but the same exemption was never made for Mexico. Well, a few months back, I joined on a letter with several Republicans and Democrats uh, headed by Mike McCall of Texas to call on the administration to include Mexico in, to, to include Mexico in that exemption. Uh, they didn't go quite that far, but they have allowed for swaps now, uh, energy swaps between Mexico and the United States. And so this issue is percolating within the United States Congress. Uh, of course, I expressed to the Prime Minister and others that just with any nation, uh, we see many debates going on in Japan now, uh, many debates in the, the parliaments and congresses of Latin America. As with any nation, uh, there are a lot of domestic politics around whether, whether or not we lift that 1975 ban on crude oil exports. But it's, it's a debate that's going to be undertaken here in the United States Congress in the next few months. Uh, but I mean that to say that, that 
uh, Japan is eager to receive our LNG exports, uh, that they are eager to receive uh, oil if we will supply it. Uh, and we want to make sure that it's the United States supplying that energy and other allies uh, rather than countries that have been uh, not quite so friendly uh, to the United States. And so I express that also. We also went there to say thank you. Uh, Japan has been a great friend over the years uh, in helping us with challenging issues in Russia, for, with Russia, for example, with Iran, uh, in fact, with terrorism uh, across Africa and the Middle East. In fact, their citizens were targeted by ISIS uh, and lost lives because they've been helpful to the United States. Uh, and so it was a way for us to say thank you very much and that we appreciate the support that Japan has given us in trying to make sure that we spread human rights and combat terrorism across the world. The second issue that we had a chance to discuss uh, in detail was uh, security. Uh, everyone knows that Japan is going through a very rigorous debate right now about whether to expand uh, their military power. Um, you know, in their constitution, uh, they have essentially allowed for only a defensive posture if they are attacked. Uh, well, the country now is considering expanding that military power. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, Japan has been a very peaceful nation, and so that debate is a very contentious one. But I expressed to the Prime Minister and to others the support of the United States in expanding that military power. And I did so because the fact is that there are many challenges around the world and in the Asia-Pacific region. If you start with that region, you think about how aggressive China has been, for example, and the South and East China Seas, and the Senkaku Islands. Uh, and uh, China shows no signs of abating uh, their aggressive maneuvers. We need to make sure that, that first of all, that the President went there last year to Japan and reaffirmed his commitment to the defense of the nation uh, as a great friend. Uh, but we also want to make sure that Japan has the capabilities uh, to be prepared, uh, you know, just to be prepared uh, and to expand its military powers. The third item, well, one more thing on that. We also seek friends around the world who are willing to take on terrorism. You know, especially since the turn of the century, we have seen terrorism become essentially a franchise in Africa and the Middle East, but also in other parts of the world, whether it was Al-Qaeda or, Al or ISIS or other franchises of those networks. Those have spread, and the United States has called on friends, and Japan has answered that call in helping us combat that kind of terrorism. And so we want to make sure that as many friends as possible are prepared for that. And so we support that legislation uh, that's going now through the Japanese diet. Uh, the third part is, of course, economic growth and trade. Uh, everyone knows that uh, the United States Congress passed uh, the TPA legislation. Uh, the next step is TPP. That negotiation includes 12 countries, uh, all with their own politics and different interests involved in trade legislation. Uh, but as I mentioned there in Japan, I hope that it's something that will be good for each of the countries involved, uh, will be fair to each of the countries involved, and hopefully something that ultimately we can get behind. Uh, we expect, uh, you know, can't say exactly when TPP will come up, but everyone knows that President Obama has made this a priority. Uh, he's included it in what he has called his pivot to Asia. Uh, and so, you know, if not before, then I suspect it will come up uh, before President Obama's term in office is complete, uh, and quite possibly uh, long before that. I qualify it a little bit because as a member of Congress, uh, we were told that TPA would come up about three times before it actually came up. Uh, and so I don't want to offer a specific month or prediction about when, uh, but I am confident that the vote will come up before the president leaves office. Um, and Japan is also now engaging more Latin American countries in trade negotiations, in free trade agreements. Uh, the prime minister went down there last year and led a de delegation of business leaders uh, to go down and see how Japan can be more involved in development in Latin America. And as I mentioned, uh, as a nation that is friendly to both Japan and to many Latin American nations, uh, we see that as a very positive thing. Uh, we see that as having profound effects in the coming years. And so in these three areas, in energy and security and in economic development, uh, there is still a lot of work to be done for all of us, both in the United States 
in Latin America and Japan, but I'm confident that working together, we can take on these challenges. I also, as Michael mentioned, had a chance to go down to Panama for the Summit of the Americas a few months back. Uh, the delegation had a chance to meet with uh, six presidents of Latin American countries while we were there. It was, of course, historic because it was the first time that Cuba has been included uh, in this dialogue. Uh, the United States continues to strengthen its relationship with Cuba. Uh, there's still an, an embargo in place, for example, but I'm confident in the coming years that embargo will be lifted. Uh, it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when. Uh, and as we go forward, uh, we need to make sure that the world and the United States are attending more and more to Latin American issues. Uh, not just issues of development and of aid, uh, which tend to be unilaterally focused and directed, but also to see Latin American countries as partners, full partners in developing democracies, not only in this Western Hemisphere, but calling on Latin, Latin American partners to help us develop democracies around the world, to be a partner in helping develop human rights around the world, and also to be a partner in combating terrorism around the world. I am somebody who believes that we have not always engaged Latin America the way that we should. We are leaving friendship and assistance on the table in a way that I think that we should not. And so in my work on the committee, um, the subcommittee uh, for the Western Hemisphere, I've tried to bring up these issues uh, to engage the, es the experts uh, and the bureaucrats in figuring out how the United States can be a better partner and find, uh, find more engagement with Latin America and get, get Latin America to engage with the world. I'm not saying that they don't. I'm not saying that, that you know, I don't mean to under, you know, sell short the efforts, but I do think that the United States has a role to play in helping Latin America become more engaged uh, in the missions that we carry out and not just see our Latin American neighbors uh, as countries uh, on a map, as countries that we simply give aid to. The fact is that those countries are much more, they're much more valuable uh, to the United States and to the world and I hope that we continue to engage them. And so, you know, best of luck in the conversations today. I hope that this will spark uh, a continued discussion um, and that this will not just be something for today, but also something that you continue, Michael, uh, and also those at JLAC. Thank you all for this. I know that we'll see more and more relationship between Japan and Latin America. And as a friend to both areas, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you.